What's going on guys, it's Salvaje and I'm back at it again with another Fortnite Save the World 100 Tips video. The reason why I say that I'm back at it again is because I already did a 100 tips video for Fortnite Save the World. A lot of amazing knowledge in that video, so if you guys want to check that out, make sure you click the first link in the description below. As you guys know, these big Save the World projects takes hours upon hours to create, so if you guys would drop the video a like, I would really appreciate that. Also, if you want to go the extra mile and you want to use my supporter creator code Salvaje, I would really appreciate that as well. With that said, let's jump into the new 100 tips that I have for Save the World. And of course, keep in mind that Save the World is an ever-changing game. So if any of these tips change, the description of this video will sort of update you guys on what tips have changed, etc, etc. Lastly, when this video reaches 500 video likes, that's right, I'm going to make another Save the World 100 tips video. With that said, let's start talking about these Save the World tips, starting off with tip number one. Heroes in Fortnite Save the World have abilities and perks. Abilities are things like Plasma Pulse, for example, and perks are things like Electrified Floors. Now, that leads me forward to tip number two. Let's say that you're using a hero in your support hero slots and that hero were to increase the ability of the current constructor that you're using, for example. Well, that means that your Plasma Pulse, it's going to be doing more damage, but your Electrified Floors will not get the ability damage bonus. And the reason for that is, is because Electrified Floors isn't an ability, it's a hero perk. So make sure that you guys definitely know the difference. Tip number three for my beginner players out there, if you hold down the grenade button when you're playing a soldier, you can actually see where your grenade is going. That leads me forward to tip number four. If you want your grenade to go a little bit further, make sure that you jump uh, after you are, of course, about to throw the grenade. Tip number five, you can actually jump and use the shockwave to, of course, counter the annoying refrigerator husk. Tip number six, if you're a high power level in a low power level mission, don't reinforce the base as much because chances are that you're going to be deleting everything that stands in your way. Tip number seven, here's an advanced tip. The more survivors you rescue on a mission, the more people you're going to get in the reward screen. So if you want to get people as fast as possible, make sure that you're saving as many survivors as possible throughout your mission. Tip number eight, if you want to find the arcade machine in city areas, make sure that you're checking the underground of the city zones. Now let's talk about elemental husk, and that leads me forward to tip number nine. Fire husk will do more damage to wooden structures. Tip number 10, water husk will do more damage to brick structures. 11, nature husk do more damage to metal structures. Tip number 12, fire husk will actually damage you over time if they hit you. Tip number 13, water husk will actually slow you down if they hit you, of course, with their melee. And tip number 14, if a nature husk hits you, they are, of course, going to be draining your energy. Tip number 15, if you jump as soon as you're about to get on a directional pad, you actually tend to go farther. Tip number 16, you take no fall damage if you use a directional pad. Tip number 17, if you don't want to wait 12 seconds to go back to home base, you can put leave match as the match is about to end. And when you get to the victory score screen, you put confirm and then you will leave the match. You won't have to wait the 12 seconds and you're still going to be, of course, getting your rewards. Tip number 18, you can actually use anti-materials charge against basic husk and it is really effective even at the lower levels of play. So beginner players, make sure that you're doing that. Tip number 19 and 20, you can use your teddy as well as your shock tower as a shield for cover. Tip number 21, you can place wall lights on walls with a hole in the center. Tip number 22, wall lights will actually stun enemies through staircases. Tip number 23, you can hit a refrigerator husk with anti-materials charge as an outlander and then just shoot him so you don't have to deal with, of course, his shield. Tip number 24, weapons like the obliterator and the ghost pistol can actually shoot through the refrigerator husk's shield. Tip number 25, make sure that you give your sniper defender an obliterator and then wall them up with four walls and a roof because the obliterator and the neon sniper can actually shoot through walls, specifically, of course, if you're using it with a defender. And if you don't have the obliterator, it's okay. Eventually, it will become part of the base game, so you don't have to worry about it. Tip number 26, give your rifle defender the candy corn LMG for free healing. Tip number 27, make sure that you hold edit on a rooftop so that other players cannot edit you down if you're on a mission. 
Tip number 28, fragments actually make it so that you don't have to waste energy when throwing down a teddy or a shock tower. Tip number 29, you can actually use the hoverboard on directional paths to go even farther. Tip number 30, make sure that you save ammo by building a loadout with different ammo types, like for example a loadout with shotgun, light bullets, and uh, medium bullets for example. Tip number 31, always build a one by one when it comes down to floating atlases, and we're going to talk about why on an upcoming tip. Tip number 32, you don't really need to place a rooftop on floating atlases that are in Planker Town and midway through Canny Valley. That leads me forward to tip number 33 though. You definitely want to be placing rooftops on uh, floating atlases in Endgame, Candy Valley and above, so in other words Twine Peaks as well. Tip number 34, make sure that you place floors inside of your pyramid build for extra protection. Tip number 35, if you build open walls in a floating atlas, the husk aren't actually going to focus on the floating atlases. Tip number 36, if you press Z on your survivor squads, the game is going to sort of tell you which survivors match the lead survivor's personality for that specific squad. Tip number 37, press the sword button as you're sending heroes on expedition so the game tells you what are the higher power level heroes. Tip number 38, visit abandoned shelters in the Save the World map and abandoned shelters are going to tell you where that survivor is at on the map. It's going to give you the location and everything. Tip number 39, find out the score of your teammates by going to the objectives menu. Tip number 40, if you actually do play with others mission, you're going to be getting 20% extra XP. Tip number 41, you can interact with the repair the shelter module with a side window. Tip number 42, if you jump really high uh, from the air with a soldier and you use shockwave as you're about to land, you actually take no fall damage. Tip number 43, don't use your pickaxe to destroy structures, just use the obliterator. Tip number 44, if you click on the more tab and then you put change tile size, you can change the tile size of your heroes or schematics. Tip number 45, if you want to find out what are things that can go in the collection book, click on the more section and then click on the show collection book thingies, uh, you know, node. Tip number 46, if you click on more and then you click on mark all as seen, you can actually mark everything new that you have gotten from Alama, for example. Uh, tip number 47, make sure that you use the sword feature to find things faster on your hero and schematic section. Tip number 48, you can actually use the teleporter gadget to teleport things like teddies and shock towers. Tip number 49, you can also use the teleporter to teleport things like grenades, ninja stars, and also rockets. Tip number 50, you can change the course of your airstrike bombs by selecting the airstrike gadget and then just pressing right click. Tip number uh, 51, make sure that you drop turrets in the enemy spawn, like that when the turrets explode, you can actually of course damage husk with the turret explosion. Uh, tip number 52, make sure that you use the slow field and mix it up with the airstrike so that you guys can get a lot of guaranteed targets. Tip number 53, you can tell that a lead survivor belongs on a specific squad if his uh, squad logo is shining. Tip number 54, event items in the item shop last an entire battle royale season for the most part. Tip number 55, weekly items only last one week. So if you see a weekly item that you like, make sure that you get it because chances are in a week it's going to be gone. Tip number 56, make sure that you unlock survivor squad slots by completing your storm shield defenses. Tip number 57, you can cancel out a smasher charge by using bull rush towards it. Tip number 58, make sure that you're opening as many event llamas as possible so that you can get easy training manuals. Tip number 59, this number might not be fully correct, but from my understanding, physical weapons do 60 67% of their total damage against elemental husk. So definitely make sure that you're using energy weapons if you're going against a lot of elemental husk. Uh, tip number 60, make sure that you use the right heroes for the right activities. For example, don't use Mega Base Kyle on a Destroy the Encampment mission because Mega Base Kyle doesn't have a lot of crazy offensive capabilities like a soldier, for example. Uh, tip number 62, make sure that you turn on the toggle to interact option in the menu, like that you don't have to hold down E or F to basically activate a storm chest, for example. Tip number 63, before dismantling an item, make sure that it is in the collection book. Tip number 64, before placing something in the collection book, make sure that you absolutely aren't going to use it because it takes 20 V-Bucks to unslot things from the collection book. Tip number 65, on higher level missions, always build final tunnels so that the husks are going to you in a predictable pattern. Tip number 66, this is for newer players, 
Do not stand inside of trap tunnels because then propanes are going to throw their propane tanks at you and you're going to blow up the trap tunnel. Tip number 67, do not throw rockets inside of trap tunnels if there's a lot of propane tanks spawning. Tip number 68, the taller the encampment, the more husks are going to spawn. Tip number 69, make sure that you shoot propane tanks from far away so that they don't destroy your precious trap tunnels. Tip number 70, if there's a propane tank on the floor, wait for a lot of husks to get around it so that you can shoot the propane tank and cause an easy area of effect explosion. Tip number 71, you can actually do more damage to husk flingers if you hit them with a melee weapon. Tip number 72, make sure that you're using the note feature in Fortnite Save the World to basically spot where good loot is for your teammates. Tip number 73, if you see a high priority target like a smasher for example in Fortnite Save the World, make sure that you use the spot feature like that your teammates are aware of that high priority target. Tip number 74, make sure that you use the trap equipper to basically equip traps easier. Tip number 75, the daily login bonus in Fortnite Save the World does not reset, okay guys? So if you miss a day of logging in and save the world, it's okay, you're still gonna be getting your rewards. Tip number 76, if you are scouting for Blue Glow, make sure that you open up your map like that you see where the nearest Blue Glow is at. Tip number 77, if you want to type something really quickly but don't actually want to type it in chat, just use the little team chat wheel that the game gives you. Tip number 78, you can actually pull out the blueprint to sort of edit things from farther away. Tip number 79, you can actually use Shockwave to sort of go through a Smasher charge and like that the Smasher doesn't throw you like really, really high in the air. Uh, tip number 80, make sure that you are using your people in Fortnite Save the World by, of course, uh, doing a lot of expeditions. And if you want a really quick, straight to the point expeditions guide that is going to tell you how to never farm again in Fortnite Save the World, check out my quick tips playlist for a six minute that for a six minute video. I mean, that just explains expeditions in a really good, fast, and effective way. Tip number 81, you can use the bull rush ability to cancel a taker charging at you. Uh, tip number 82, place down a decoy if you're surrounded by Hus so that you can get yourself in a better position. Tip number 83, you can actually place down a decoy so that, like that the propane Hus throw their propane tanks at your decoy instead of you. Tip number 84, your war cry ability will affect your teammates if you of course use it through a wall. Tip number 85, make sure that you throw two keep out grenades in the enemy spawn for massive AoE damage as the husks are spawning. Keep out grenades are grenades that Master Grenadier Ramirez has, by the way. It's basically the grenades that cause like an energy field to be on the ground. Tip number 86, remember you can always shoot down lobber skulls from the sky. Tip number 87, make sure that you know about target priority and save the world. And knowing about target priority and save the world means that you always take out blasters first no matter what. Tip number 88, energy weapons will do a total of 75% of their damage to elemental husk. Tip number 89, against fire husk, you always want to be using water weapons to do 100% of the weapon's damage. Tip number 90, against water husk, make sure that you're using nature weapons. Tip number 91, against nature husk, make sure that you're using fire weapons. Tip number 92, headshots are actually very important in Fortnite Save the World, so make sure that you're going for them. Tip number 93, make sure that you avoid killing husk. Uh, that are just randomly in the world because it's just gonna waste your weapons durability tip number 94 You can easily destroy structures with the bowler launcher and if you don't have the bowler launcher Eventually it will be a part of the base game. So don't worry about it tip number 95 Make sure that you place as many green and blue stuff in your collection book when you first start playing Fortnite save the world for some really easy rewards Tip number 96, you can actually destroy structures really easily with the going commando ability. Tip number 97, if you are going against a refrigerator husk, you can actually throw the shock tower or the teddy behind them to easily destroy them. Tip number 98, if the storm chest isn't in the borders of the map, that means the storm, the storm chest is somewhere in the center of the map. Tip number 99, make sure that you're uh, maximizing your hammer melee weapons that have the lunge attack. For example, take out enemies on one side and instead of running to the other side of enemies, just use the lunge attack to of course prioritize other enemies. And tip number 100, make sure that you use your environment as cover. And this might sound like a really basic tip, but a lot of the reasons why a lot of players sometimes get downed in Fortnite Save the World is because they don't build and they're not using their environment as cover. You always want to sort of manipulate where the husks are going by of course sort of using the environment uh, to your advantage. And that's pretty much it guys. After a month of writing down these 100 tips and about 10 plus hours of video editing, the video is finally complete. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a lot of new stuff. A like on the video is appreciated. Like I said, when this video reaches 500 video likes, I will do another 100 Save the World Tips video. 
As always, I hope you guys also subscribe to the channel for more Save the World content. And of course, if you guys can use my supporter creator code Salvaje, that would help me out a lot and I would highly appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and of course, I hope you guys also stick around for more Save the World content.